Hi Physics, hey, I'm gonna go through some examples on problems that are similar to what uh, you'll be assigned in chapter one. And the big thing here is I know a lot of you guys aren't gonna be used to solving these things on paper with pencil. You know, you're, you're good at math and so you like to just crank through answers and maybe your math teachers aren't great at having you show work. But the thing about physics and science and engineering in general is the process of solving a problem should be really methodical. So as much as you hate writing and showing work and canceling units and all the stuff that I kind of harped on in chemistry, uh, it's really, really important in physics. And you're gonna be like, well, why is it so important when these problems are so simple? We've been doing velocity, distance, time stuff, you know, since eighth grade. And the big thing is just the problems are gonna get much, much harder in the next coming chapters, right? The formulas that we use, these are all derived from calculus equations and you just need to know the algebra to solve them. Well, the algebra is pretty simple this chapter and it kind of gets more complex as we go, okay? Uh, it, not saying that it's gonna be hard, but it's gonna be more straightforward if you practice showing your work now and you just build those muscles. This is like, this is exactly like practicing a sport or practicing something else, solving problems in a science and engineering class just takes practice and you get better at it. So as much as you don't want to, uh, you, you need to try these on paper, okay? And then you'll just take a picture and submit them to me. Now, these are not the assignments. These are just examples. I'm gonna go through, I don't know, about 10, 10 problems or so just to get the juices going. And then you guys will try the problem set that I've assigned and submit it by the end of the week. So, all right, here we go. Um, in 1968, uh, the horse Dr. Fager ran a mile, one mile in 32.2 seconds. Find his average speed in meters per second. So this is more unit conversion, just to remind you that units still matter. So it says he ran one mile in 32.2 seconds. And we want to convert it to meters per second. So this is just like our chemistry unit conversion. I can say one mile is equivalent to uh, 5,280 feet. And then if I look up the conversion of uh, how many feet are in a meter, then that would get me to meters per second. So let's go look that up. I don't know these, so we're just gonna go one meter to feet, 3.28. And just reminder of sig figs, um, the problem gave his time with three sig figs, so I'm going to get four. So 3.281, I know this is probably overkill. <clears throat> and this is an exact, so this is infinitely precise. This has four sig figs. Some of you don't know what a sig fig is, so you can just kind of ignore this. I am gonna round my answer to three significant digits at the end. So the way I type it in, one divided by 32.2, okay, times 5,280 divided by 3.281, right? Denominator gets divided, numerators gets multiplied. I get 49.997, oops, 977, and then I'll round it. That comes 50.0 meters per second. Okay. All right. So just just a little warm up there. Okay. Here's a little here's a little trickier one having to do with some volume. I wanted to show you what happens when you have squared units and cubed units in this case. So it says a board foot, right? Those of you in in wood shop or those of you who get into carpentry, sometimes you'll buy really expensive wood, you know, oak and mahogany and all these things. You'll buy them by the board foot. It's a unit of lumber that corresponds to a volume of a piece of wood that is one foot square and one inch thick. How many cubic inches are there in a board foot? So this is what they're trying to describe, right? One inch by one foot. Let's just do the conversions here. This would be 12 inches and 12 inches. So the volume is equal to one times 12 times 12 comes out to 144 cubic inches, right? So I know the volume in cubic inches, 
and then how many cubic feet and how many cubic centimeters. So here's the conversion. When you're converting something that contains a unit, but to the third power, you can convert it just like we've always done with our conversion factors. So I'll start with 144 cubic inches, but this time I need to convert, let's go to uh, feet first. And go inches to foot, but you'll notice an inch doesn't cancel all of a cubic inch. So I need to do it three times, right, to the third power. And I can say 12 inches in one foot. And so basically, I would type this into my calculator 144 divided by 12, divided by 12, divided by 12. This is 0 0.0833 cubic feet. Another way to show this would take 144 cubic inches, and you could say 1 foot and 12 inches, right? And cubing it, <clears throat> the cube, if you think about this in math, this cubes the foot, cubes this, but you also need to cube the 12. So don't forget to divide by 12 cubed if you're doing that okay so i kind of like oops i kind of like writing it out with the expanded version with three of them just so i don't forget to cube the 12. okay if we were doing this in cubic centimeters i'd go inch to centimeters one inch is 2.54 now on my calculator i would type in 144 times 2.54 to the third right, because I have to cube it to cancel the cubic inches. 144 times 2.54 cubed to, let's say 2360 cubic centimeters. So th those are all equivalent to one board foot, okay, one board foot. All right, next one says, let's get into velocity. So this is, the first chapter is about motion, so velocity, acceleration, position, distance, and then getting into what are called the kinematic equations. So this one, it says, a car travels 540 kilometers in 4.5 hours. How far will it go to 8 hours at the same average speed? How long will it take to go 200 kilometers at this speed? So... We can get velocity, right? Velocity is distance over time. We're going to use x, right? That's typically a horizontal distance. So if it's 540 kilometers divided by 4.5 hours, 540 divided by 4.5, that's 120 kilometers per hour. Notice I'm showing my units on everything, right? A velocity will do a lot in meters per second, but as long as it's a distance over a time unit, you got it. So that's velocity. And then it's asking how far will it go in eight hours? So let's do a little rearrangement. If I take this and I wanna solve for how far it'll go, that's X. So to solve for X, I'm gonna multiply the T up, right? So bring the T to this side. That's velocity times time. So here I'll take 120 kilometers per hour times 8.0 hours. Notice they give us, right, just, just sticklers for sig figs. There's two sig figs. There's two sig figs. So I'm going to put two in my answer, 120 times 8. This is 960 kilometers. And you can see that it's kilometers because the hours cancel. Okay, it's a good idea to put your answers in boxes. This is just stuff that I remember, you know, it's just that muscle memory. And this is, this was like pages and pages of engineering homework and solving physics problems and you always set things up label your units um and then s put a box around your answer okay uh how long will it uh how long will it take to go 200 kilometers so that's solving for time if i solve for time i need to divide by velocity so distance divided by velocity comes out the time i need to go 200 kilometers divided by 120 kilometers per hour, 200 divided by 120 comes out to, let's just go 1.7. And here, kilometers cancel the hours denominator of the denominator end up in the numerator, comes out to 1.7 hours. All right.
here you go. Here's the start of the kinematic equations. So I put these, these formulas are, are at the back of the chapter, okay? Um, they're written on your assignment sheet, and they're basically four equations that describe the motion of an object under constant acceleration. So this first equation relates the velocity and the acceleration of an object to give a final velocity. So if you know the starting velocity, the acceleration, and the time, then you can get the final velocity. And these are all algebraic relationships. So as long as you know all of them but one, you can solve it. Or later on, if we need systems of equations, you'd need to know two equations. Okay, the problem is these are all tied together to the same calculus equation, which we're going to gloss over. This is physics with algebra, not physics with calculus. So you can't, <clears throat> you can't solve systems of equations with these. They're all actually the same equation, just different forms of it. Okay, so the second one tells you that the average velocity, that's velocity original plus velocity final divided by two times time is equal to distance. Sorry, I have the hiccups. Distance, right, is equal to velocity times time plus one half at squared. That's for an object accelerating. And then if you know information about velocities starting and final, Maybe you can solve for distance traveled if you know the acceleration. So basically, the next few examples, we're going to use one of these four equations. They're all kind of just rehashed. It's, it's an exercise in algebra. So think of physics. You guys took all this algebra 1, algebra 2, even geometry. You've got maybe some trigonometry under your belt. This class is a chance for you to apply a lot of that knowledge. So if you're strong in algebra, you're going to be great. If you know that you maybe struggled or, you know, it's not your favorite, then you just need to get through this. Now, physics, there's a lot of conceptual stuff, but then there's a lot of solving problems with math. So you can enjoy the conceptual stuff, but you still have to get through the math. And everybody can get through this, right? Everybody can do this and we'll offer help But uh, for those of you who need it. But let's just give it a shot, all right? So they'll start off easier. They'll build. So it says a car starts from a velocity of 10 meters per second. So that's original velocity or initial velocity. I'm going to write these out. Uh, and an acceleration of 2 meters per second. New meters per second squared, sorry. <clears throat> Find the time needed to reach uh, 20 meters per second. So velocity final is equal to 20 meters per second. So if I look, if I just num number these, one, two, three, and four, I can see it has four variables with the time being unknown. I'm going to use equation one. So I know the final velocity, right? A car traveling with a final velocity of 20 meters per second, starting at 10 meters per second. Right, and it accelerates two meters every second. This is a linear equation. So to solve it, minus 10. I know it's silly to include units, but we're gonna do it. Let's cancel, I get 10 meters per second equals 2.0 meters per second squared times t. And to solve for t, I'll divide by the acceleration. Okay, these cancel, I get T equals, notice, I'll draw it, meters cancel, one of the seconds cancels, and the second ends up, this seconds ends up on top, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so this would be 5 seconds, in 5 seconds it's going to go from 10 to 20, you're like, Mr. Ford, I could do that in my head, it says it starts at 10, it accelerates two meters per second every second. So 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, five seconds later, it's 20. You should always do a reality check, <clears throat> but just showing you that algebra works. Or you could have arranged that equation, say we're solving for T. Well, VF minus VO, oops, equals VO plus AT. I can say VF minus VO divided by A equals t. If I take that equation and rearrange it first, then I can just plug in my variables. Okay, here you go. 
Next one. It says a Ferrari covers 100 meters. So the distance traveled is 100 meter, meters from a standing start. Standing start or no initial velocity. We're going to say V sub zero, which is initial velocity. We also say V naught. V naught is zero meters per second. And it takes six seconds to do that. And acceleration is constant. I should note all these equations only work for constant acceleration, which for all intents and purposes, we can, a lot of things that we solve are going to be constant acceleration, especially when things act under the influence of gravity. So for now, right, we're going to assume that these are good. In chapter one, unless it says the acceleration is changing, then we can use these equations. So it wants to know, find its final velocity. All right, so it wants to know VF. So, uh, and it doesn't tell us its acceleration. It just says it covers 100 meters from a standing start in six seconds at constant acceleration. Find its final velocity. All right, so I think if I go look at this, number two talks about average velocity, and by average, I mean the stuff in the parentheses. It's got starting and ending velocity. It's got time in it. It's got x. We're solving for time, right? It wants to know how long will it take to, oh no, actually, it tells us how long it will take, so let's just copy that one down. x is equal to v o plus <coughs> v f over 2 times t. And it wants to know VF. So let's solve it algebraically first. We'll divide by T. Those go away. I'll multiply by 2. Right? To cancel out the 2. Then I'll subtract V0. Alright. So I know it's kind of messy. But turns out if I subtract V0, these cancel. Oh, Mr. Ford, that's ugly. But I can say VF equals... 2x over t minus v naught. All right, so if I want to know final velocity, I could say 2 times the distance covered divided by time minus the initial velocity, which is 0 meters per second. Okay, so in this case, vf comes out to 2 times 100 divided by 6, and we don't need to subtract off the 0, 33 meters per second, okay, 33.3, .3, we'll say, would be my final velocity. So we went from 0 to 33 meters per second in 6 seconds, right, and therefore he covered 100 meters, okay. Um, if if doing all this algebra, like right here, was a bit much, then you'd just plug in your values, right? You'd say 100 equals uh, 0 my plus, and we were solving for VF over 2 times 6. Oops. And then you could solve, you could solve the algebra equation there, right? You could do 6 divided by 2, so that's 3. Divide both sides by 3, you get... 33.3 .3. so lots of ways to skin a cat there's you know out this is why we practice algebra so i'm i'm really excited uh you know physics is where you actually start to use all that math that you and you're still gonna be like well why is this important because you can do some really cool things i've just been listening to elon musk you know talk to joe rogan and and just hearing about all the problems that he's thinking about and all the all the cool technology he's putting into his cars and his rockets and all that stuff. Man, there's so much cool stuff that you can do with physics. Okay. All right. So number 34, a golf cart has an acceleration of 0 0.4 meters per second squared. What is its velocity? So what's its VF after it's starting from rest? So I know... Its initial velocity is 0 meters per second, and it's covered 10 meters. So I know distance, I know initial velocity, and acceleration. 
So I know for number four, I know distance, I know acceleration, and I know its initial velocity, and it's asking what's its final velocity. So we're going to use number four. So that says final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times distance. So let's go write that one out. Sorry, I got to scroll around. V f squared equals v o squared plus 2 a x well this term right goes away because it's got no initial velocity <clears throat> v f squared is equal to 2 times 0.4 meters per second squared times uh x 10 meters all right so just to show <coughs> show you units work out v f squared equals Zero, let's see, what does that come out to? 0 0.8 times 10. So 2 times 4, 0.4 times 10 comes out to 8. And the units work out to be meters squared, right? Meters times meters over seconds squared. And then to solve for the final velocity, you can take the square root. And so I get final velocity is equal to the square root of 8. We don't use, leave things as, as radicals in here. I know your algebra 2, you could simplify that, right? To, was that 2 root 2? But we're going to use 2.83 like meters per second. The square root of meters squared per second squared is a meters per second. So there's its final velocity. All right. Number 36. A car moving at 20 meters per second slows down at negative 1.5 meters per second to a velocity of 10 meters per second. So it's slowing down. How far did the car go during the slowdown? So we know, I'll just label these now. I know acceleration. I know initial velocity. I know final velocity. And I want to solve for... Uh, how far did the car go, which is x. So it's going to be the same equation as the previous one, vf squared equals vo squared plus 2ax, except this time I can plug in 10. That's 10 meters per second times itself equals 20 meters per second plus 2 times negative 1.5 meters per second squared times x, which we don't know. So this is 100 meters squared per second squared is equal to 20 times 20 is 400 meters squared per second squared. This would be 2 times negative 1.5 is negative 3.0 meters per second squared times x. Or if it bugs you, you could say plus a negative. So then to solve for x, I'm going to subtract 400. You, you should double check. You can only subtract things if the units match. So here I'm subtracting 100 minus 400 meters squared per second squared, which is negative 300 equals negative 3.0 meters per second squared times x. I'll go over here. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. So I get negative 300 divided by negative 3 is 100. Dividing out a meters per second squared leaves a meters equals x, right? I'm taking this and dividing it, right, into that. And so the everything cancels but a meters. So I'm left with 100 meters. All right, number 44. We're going to... So, it says a bullet's fired vertically upwards, and it takes 20 seconds. T equals 20 seconds for it to hit the ground. So in the absence of air resistance, which for this problem, we're going to say there's no air resistance, the time it takes to get to the top and the time it takes to get from the top back to ground is equal. So in this case, it reaches its, it's called an apogee, at 10 seconds. Okay. We know that when we sh shoot it out of the gun, it has some initial velocity, but we don't know what that is yet. But we do know at the top, 
and we're only going to look at this one-way path to start with, okay, we know that its velocity at the top, or its final velocity, is equal to zero meters per second. Any projectile going up, when it hits its highest point, for a split second, okay, there's no velocity in the up or down direction. Gravity is going to then accelerate it towards the Earth, right, and it's going to speed up, but right at the top, it's not moving vertically, right? So zero meters per second. So knowing that, we can take the first equation and we can solve for the initial velocity. So the final velocity is zero meters per second. The initial velocity, we'll just say VO. Gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second. Oops, meters per second squared. And then times time, it takes 10 seconds to get up there. <clears throat> so if I solve for VO, I would just basically add 98, right? Negative 9.8 times 10 is 98, negative 98. So I'm going to add 98, that's meters per second, to both sides. These cancel. I get 98 meters per second equals my starting velocity. Okay, so that coming out of the gun, the projectile is moving 98 meters per second. And the question is, find the height that it reaches. So now, right, I can use this third equation, and I know it's odd that it says x, right, because y is in the vertical direction. So we're just going to change that to a y. We're going to say y equals the initial velocity, which was 98 meters per second, times time, which is 10 seconds up to the top, plus 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 10 seconds squared and that is right the third equation so i plugged in everything i know now and i can solve for y so here i get 980 meters right 98 times 10 plus i'll do this one half so 0. 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 10 squared which is 100 is negative 490 and I look at the units here, I end up getting the seconds squared and the seconds squared cancel. So I end up getting meters. So I end up getting y equals negative or 4, 980 plus negative 490 comes out to 490 meters. So this bullet, right, coming out of the gun goes up 490 meters in 10 seconds. And it falls back down to ground in another 10 seconds. So it goes, right? And, and at the end, <clears throat> its velocity actually turns out to be the same as it originally was. It's just in the negative direction. So right when it hits the ground at that moment of impact, it's going to be traveling, what is it, 98 meters per second downward. So negative 98 meters per second. All right, let's try another one. This one is similar. It says a stone is thrown vertically upward at 9.8 meters per second. So we know initial velocity is 9.8. And when will it reach the ground? So what's T? And I can say T to hit the ground, right? Because it could ask what's how long does it take to get to its high point? How long does it take to get to the ground? We still know acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So here... Let's see. Mm, I know velocity. I don't know anything about, uh, let's see, when will it reach the ground? I know its final velocity will be uh, stone is thrown vertically upward at 9.8 meters per second. When will it reach the ground? So we're solving for T. So that throws out equation number four because that doesn't have a T in it. Um, we could solve for, I think we could solve for it, what do we know? When will it reach the ground? All right, so it's thrown vertically at 9.8 meters per second. Let's say at its top point, velocity at the top is equal to zero meters per second. So I could solve for its time at the top pretty uh, easily, I think. So let's let's use that first equation. Vf equals V 
initial plus a t. So the velocity at the top, okay, we're going to say that that's its final velocity is zero meters per second. Okay, its initial velocity was 9.8 meters per second. And its acceleration is negative 9.8. Okay, times t. So in this case, I need to, I, I could solve this one in my head, right? The only way, I don't need to move things around. The only way for this to come out to equal zero would be if t equals one. So if time equals one second, okay, it takes one second to get to the top. Then in the absence of air resistance, one second up, one second down. So the total time t equals two seconds. When will it reach the ground? So we've got this one. Oops, I circled the wrong thing. T equals two seconds, and that's to hit the ground.